over 500 years ago in the lands of Sumeru, before it became a desert of knowledge. It was home to the great forests of the God of the Woods, one of the seven Archons that ruled Teyvat. Within its forests lived the human separated from the confines of society, one who lived in this forest, not as a human, but as a part of nature. She was known as the uncrowned Queen of Hunters, for none but nature itself would be above her to crown her. The Queen of Hunters would walk the fields barefoot. Grass beneath her feet would tell her what the birds in the trees could see. The mud she trod would tell her what the roots in the earth could hear. The forest itself was her ally. And should you ever find yourself being hunted by her, no amount of hiding will save you from her sight. Luckily for those who have to pass through the forest, she is a gentle hunter, one who would never harm you lest you make yourself an enemy of the forest. One would think that to find a being of nature itself would be difficult. But the Queen of Hunters actually likes humans as she still misses her own race. One only need prepare a campfire and stories of laughter to summon the Queen of Hunters. Once she picks up the scent of humans around a campfire, she slowly approaches them. As a hunter, she feared neither pack wolves nor monsters. What she feared far more was joining the chatter by the campfire, for she had long forgotten how to speak human language. But even then, every trader, adventurer, or passerby within the forest would welcome her into their camp, for having the Queen of Hunters with you guarantees your safety in the forest. The Queen of Hunters, though reluctantly, would join the humans whenever they passed by. The people started to call her the Viridesen Venera. Despite their acceptance, she would never speak a single word to them. Similarly, whenever the festivities end, the people would wake to find no trace of her. Many wonder why the Viridesen Venera would sit with travelers. Some would speculate that she misses her former life, or that she finds comfort in knowing that humans are still around. But some notice that whenever she sits by the campfire, she opens her water bottle and leaves it open throughout the entire night. In truth, she collects the laughter and the stories that she hears throughout the night and stores it in the vessel through the power of animal. She would then listen back to the voices of the humans and the stories they tell whenever she felt lonely. The tale of the Viridescent Venner spread through the land through the caravans that would pass through the forest. Her legend grew and she was known as the kind and gentle Viridescent Venera. Legend has it that when her arrows would hit its target, she would always come down and stroke the fur of her prey until its life force returned to nature. And she would never slay for the sake of sport, she would only hunt for the sake of survival. She would never waste the bounty of nature. For she believed that at the end of her life, she would wake up from reality and be reunited with the departed at defenseless hunting rents. A reality that would come sooner than expected, for it was at this time the calamity of Kenria occurred. Darkness seeped from the abyss and monsters arrived in Sumeru in force. The god of the woods would take his stand against the encroaching darkness. A young boy ran through the forest, monster on his tail. He closed his eyes from the fear, following naught but the subtle fragrance of the wildflowers. As legend stated that the viridescent Venner conceals her human scent, and to seek her out one must follow the scent of wildflowers instead. The young boy ran crackling the leaves underfoot, disturbing the forest. He could hear the forest around him and the monster behind him. When an arrow flew right by him, the sound of the monster ceased and vanished. He opened his eyes to see the viridescent Venner standing before him, but he quickly falls back, for what he sees is not the gentle and kind viridescent Venner the legends had spoke of, but the Queen of Hunters with a face of vengeance and suffering. The Queen of Hunters could no longer hear the forest speak, the birds vanished and the grass and trees never spoke again. The forest weep in agony instead, for its master, the god of the woods, had perished. The Queen of Hunters became lost and unbridled with vengeance. She crafted a wayfinder with her determination, for she could no longer find her way in the forest. 
the Wayfinder only pointed towards her next prey, her next kill. She remembers the request of the young boy, to save him, to save the people. She ceased hunting birds and beasts. Instead, she made the monsters that brought destruction and suffering her prey. The Queen of Hunters no longer saw defenseless rants at the end of her life. For all she wanted now was the destruction of the monsters. It was thanks to her efforts that Sumeru was spared its demise. None know of her ultimate fate, but all they knew was the kind and gentle viridescent venerer was no more. All that is left is the uncrowned Queen of Hunters.